Hey there ladies and gentlemen and welcome back for another video. I'm your host Patson and today we're going to be taking a look at r slash cheating stories where OP discovers that his wife is a cheater but only after she passed away. Great marriage until wife dies. Realize infidelity after she died. Swept it under the rug for the kids' sake. But now, it's come back to haunt me. Posted by Reddit user trying to hold the wind. My significant other, an extrovert, and I, an introvert, started dating in our mid-twenties. We both had our fill with one-night stands and cheating partners. Three years later, we were married. We were best friends that had a lot of fun and couldn't keep our hands off each other. On my significant other's 34th birthday, I gave her a ring box with a note asking if she would quit her birth control so we could have a baby together. She jumped into my arms and kissed me until I lost my balance and fell on the floor. The happiest I've ever seen her. She took me into the bedroom, past the bed, into the bathroom where she flushed her remaining pills. Over the next five years, we unfortunately lost three pregnancies. This hurt us both deeply. We talked and decided to adopt. The process is long. But in our early 40s, we watched our daughter, M, be born. The sparkle was back in her eye. The next eight years were wonderful. My significant other was the kindest, most empathetic mother I've ever seen. All of our friends told me how lucky I was. At 50, my significant other asked me to get a vasectomy to lessen the chance of another unwanted pregnancy. I had a bad case of the flu the week before my snip, and I had to cancel. My significant other got the same flu from me the next week. She wouldn't let me take her to the hospital, but I finally took her to the emergency room where she had a stroke that lapsed into a coma. Six horrible days later, she passed away. Both M and myself were devastated. It took almost a year before she could sleep in her own bed. She said she was afraid that I'd leave her too. Soon, I received two credit card statements in her name. The balance for both cards was just shy of $14,000, mostly in cash advances. This got me thinking about the last year. One, our intimate life went from normal, down to once every week or two, to giving and not receiving head but no penetration. She also had a few new foreplay tricks she'd never used before. Two, we also went from talking over everything at dinner, to barely talking by the end of the year, then to the point that she would avoid talking to me at all. Three, all we had was a landline with two phones. She would get mysterious late night calls and the caller ID register was always cleared, completely not normal. 4. She went from having girls night every week or two to girls night twice a week by the end of the year. Her dress for girls night also went from jeans and a sweater to being dolled up by the end of the year. She would even get her hair done sometimes. 5. Then I got a total confirmation of her affair in the mail. I was blissfully ignorant and enjoyed the one-on-one -on -one time with M. Playtime, bath time, chasing her until she would go to bed, then story time and kiss her on the forehead goodnight. After a couple of years of grieving and obsessing, my company offered me a job far away, and I jumped at it. I pretty much just swept everything under the rug, and we left. Fast forward 10 years, and I start having these vivid dreams that I remembered for days. My significant other would be dressed beautifully dancing and kissing her affair partner. They would go to their room, stripped in front of me and throw their clothes on me, then screw in front of me and laugh at my misery. I finally went to an individual counselor who told me that I never got closure on my significant other's affair. I'm now 64 and just retired, and M is 22 and wants to move back to our hometown. I'm hesitant because I still don't know who the affair partner is. And I don't want to be nice to the son of a gun that screwed my wife. I would be surprised if the affair partner was outside of our circle of friends. I also don't want M looking up to someone who screwed her mother. Should I ask significant other's best friend who the affair partner is? Should I dig all this back up? I'm obsessing again. I thought all of this was behind me. Please, let me know. Now for OP's update. I want to thank you to all of you that commented on my original post. I tried to read, digest, and return all of your comments. It really gave me something to think about, and I appreciate it. After my post, I started taking my prescribed sleep aids. I've had eight really good nights of sleep without a dream about my significant other. I'm feeling better already. 
I talked to my significant other's BFF yesterday, and we went over to her sister's for Memorial Day barbecue. We went back to her place and spent some time catching up. Then I asked her if she knew who my significant other was having an affair with before she passed. She was stunned and surprised when I told her. I think it took her completely by surprise. She said, Oh God, no. All she ever wanted was to have a family. She reminded me that it was the year of her divorce, and rather than being less than a mile away from our house, she was now 20 miles away. They didn't see each other as often as they used to. I don't know if it was one of the comments on my post or another post I read, but the commenter mentioned that when caught, the wayward wife would say she was lonely because I wouldn't talk to her, even though it was her that stopped talking to me. Significant other may have actually been lonely with her manufactured cold shoulder to me and her BFF moving away. Another commenter said that significant other felt guilty and couldn't look me in the eye. Significant other was one to carry her guilt around like a ball and chain. I had my list of nine possibilities and without showing her my list, I asked BFF who she would put on her list of affair partners. The first name she said was number two on my list. The next two I had thought of but left off my list. After I told her my reasons, she agreed. The fourth guy she mentioned was number one on my list. She had two more and we agreed that it wouldn't be them either. Then I went through the rest of my list and after discussions, we shot down most of them but agree that number 8 on my list was a possibility. Also, we both agreed that significant other would have to know someone to have an affair. She wasn't one to be picked up randomly. When we were done, she asked me if I noticed anything about the three guys. She said that they all had the same personality. They would talk only when talked to, funny, intelligent, caring, helpful, and somewhat of a perfectionist by nature. She said they were all like me, which is obviously my significant other's type. That floored me. Why would she look for another me if she already had me? Were we projecting? Was she looking for that spark we had when we first met? I always left work at work. I tried to take care of M when I came home from work so that she could relax. Did I not give her enough attention? I always hug and kiss my significant other in front of M. When M was young, she sometimes got a little jealous and it was cute. Later on when we hugged and kissed, M would hop up and down and squeal until we swept her up, and significant other and I would hug and kiss her in between us while she giggled in delight. After we moved and settled in, I plan on taking M to town for a weekend and dropping her off with her friends while I go see number one, number two, and number eight. Hopefully I will get the answer I want and be able to leave this nonsense alone for good. Thank you for sharing your story, OP. You really show that you're an amazing father, raising your daughter alone and having to deal with the grief of not only losing your wife, but also the possibility that she was cheating on you. It really shows true strength of an individual, and I salute you for that. But I do suggest that letting your daughter know what's going on. Let her know what you feel. Let her know what you've been dealing with the last few years. She's an adult. She will understand you. She can support you. She could be the rock that you need, just like you had been to her all her life. And in my opinion, she also deserves to know the truth, just as much as you do. I hope you find the closure you're looking for, OP. And when you do, I hope you can give us one more update. A final chapter, if you will. Good luck, OP. Thanks for listening, everyone. If you even somewhat enjoyed today's story, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. And if you really like it, make sure to subscribe to Patson to never miss a future upload. Stay strong.